everyone. Jay and A here from Euro Weight Loss. Did you end up getting a good picture? I feel like no. The, the it was a terrible picture. I look like okay, delusional right now. Right now. in this picture. It's like I can't. That's one of my skills. It's not It's not my highlight of my skills. <laughs> Put a good filter on that. <laughs> um, um, good morning. Good morning. Do you know that th there's no one in my home right now? Where are they? <gasps> they left. Oh, did they this go hang a, out at someone else's home? This is a really good story. I woke up this morning and I said to Neil, so we're recording a bit ahead of time, guys, but it's a snow day here. And I said, I need to work all day. Yes. I and need you to do, work. like you legit need to. <laughs> yes, I need I, to I know work what you mean. all day. Yeah. And he was like, okay. And he wanted to go painting. Because my husband is an artist and he, he's got a mural business now, apparently. He does. Um, but it's, and he's rocking it and, yeah. and he really enjoys it. And I love having him out of the home. I, it's important for his health and his like his happiness to spend yeah. some time out of the home. Anyway, and so and my marriage. Yeah. So he um, he or like the, the he's partners with Jillian and Josh is watching the kids. And he organized it. Do you know what I mean? Because I told him what I needed today. So it wasn't like, oh, I'll just leave the kids. And and because he could have been like, I'll just leave the kids and go painting. He knew. And so he organized the kids were going to go somewhere else. I love it. This is like a moment. Yes. Go I Neil. said it's about time someone starts pulling their weight around here. Someone else <laughs> takes care of these kids. Oh, my gosh. We're like so in the trenches. Is that what you guys – is that how we say Drenches? Yeah. Trenches? Trenches, yeah. I was thinking the other day how like I think we were texting and we were complaining about um, our husbands. And <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about how – we we were complaining and we actually like really like our husbands like we actually like really want to stay married are actually really happy um you know and we're really proud of our choices of who we married and it's like and i just thought about how hard it, like how hard it is to accomplish the things and we have like both like neil likes to go out and likes to like do other, like it's not just like his eight to five job like he needs other things to fill his like joy and his hobbies and we are the same we actually like work a lot though yeah. um so we have jobs that are demanding si tu veux, and like that we have to show up and we have to keep you know um we work for ourselves so it's like as we sh if we keep showing up that's our success right so we have to like keep going anyways and just like our age and our kids ages and just like how it can only get better, um, but how we need to be a partnership in order for this to work. Absolutely. Like, and like respect each other's time and oh my gosh. communicate. There was a lack of communication with the calendar. Right. With this one. Right. Yes. And there was some blames happening. Yeah. Okay. Blaming. Won't get into that. Get, no. It's all, but, our but, you're, but you're so right. Like it is staying married, staying happily married, um, respecting each other's things that each other needs to be happy outside. Like Neil's art mural business is not anything to do with me or our family. It is That's him. That's Neil. And like you have to keep that to be a happy person. You have to have an identity that's not just – uh, with your family and your job yeah no right that's absolutely. neil neil is art like he needs yes. that to be neil yes absolutely and i just feel like if i'm if i'm if i'm really thinking about um why i guess we're different or why it's like we're like hopefully oh, really you have to like have a calendar or whatever is because we actually like all of all four of us neil and jeff included we all prioritize our happiness and I think that in most relationships, there's always one that does not and kind of like prioritizes more what the family needs. And yeah. like I think that's why it's like maybe we have like not rough conversations, but like conversations like, what? You didn't tell me that on the calendar because I have plans. And like we're, we're not just like, oh, well, I'm the one that never does anything. You know what I mean? We don't do anything because we don't want to like stir up the pot or whatever. Yeah. So I do think that that's maybe why. But at the end of the day, though, I think that we're creating such great relationships and great lives. I'm just thinking of the typical Absolutely. wife that is like maybe not saying to her husband that she's unhappy. Oh, there are women that just quite literally never even, okay, it's like when you were breastfeeding. Remember when you were breastfeeding and you're like, okay, if I want to be able to go out, I'm going to have to pump, but then I can't just like pump and like leave it in a bottle. I am going to have to like pump it and then like test it and then, and then see, and it's like all this like upfront effort in order to like leave. 
Yeah. It's like that. Like it, it, you have to put in the effort ahead to like create this system where you get to leave. And sometimes we're just like, I'm just not going to leave because yeah. what if someone needs me? What if like the other day I left during Alfie's tutoring session, which I don't normally do. And I felt bad. The The tutor didn't send the sheets through until 410 and it, his tutoring's at 430. I was off on my walk. Neil doesn't know how to use our printer. Oh my God. And I know. And um, I could have not left. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, what if they need me? What if something goes wrong? What if they can't figure out the link? But you guys, you have like, you have to start leaving. Yeah. And it stems literally, I really think I started to lose myself as a mother literally when I was like breastfeeding and I was the only person that could feed yeah. my baby. I know what you mean. I think some women, like that's where their, their, their journey as a mother starts and whether it's breastfeeding or bottle feeding doesn't really matter. But like that baby needs you, that baby needs you or will die or will die. And so if you never leave that baby with someone else, it doesn't really get easier. Like you know what I mean? Like you right. have to start somewhere. You have to step away at yeah. some point. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. now they won't die. Like now they won't no. die. They no. can use their words. Yeah. Um, but it's still hard. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so what? Why? Ooh, how did this happen? I just, Holy I man! Like I don't I know how this what's happening. happening. Okay, let's like talk about gravy it. and pie. <laughs> Wow. Because today we're talking about pie and gravy. And the reason why I wrote those two things is because pie and gravy are very part of the tradition. The tr just It's traditional food that comes with Christmas. Maybe not pie, but gravy for sure. Um, oh, pie uh, for sure. Pie for sure. Okay. I oh, just yeah. didn't know if you agreed with me. Um, yeah. But yeah, pie and gravy. They're like the two things that I'm like, guys, you know, uh, weight gain is not in the pie or it's not in the gravy. And it's not. the conversation today is about food labeling, how – this is the perfect time of year to practice. Remember how last meeting you said it's the perfect time of year to practice not having the all or nothing mentality for weekends and whatever, because there's activities every, all the time. Well, you know what? December, see all the learning that you can be doing in a month of December where most people, society is like, I quit. I'll be back in January. There's so many opportunities for you, for you to use the proper language and the proper strategies to get through you guys. It's actually not that hard. <laughs> You know, like it's actually not like it, it's not that hard. I actually think it would be an amazing month to work on it because I think the expectation is not to lose weight in December. Right. The I like expectation, that. like there's that added pressure, that extra layer of stress, let's say in January oh, as like for that. weight loss, like right? Yep. December, imagine if you're just your, your, you know, your goal for December was like to create different language in your brain, to create awareness, to listen to your hunger, to like, like, imagine if that was the goal. I think it is an incredible month to test out the power of calorie deficit. Oh. Test it. To test, test it, to it, experience you guys. it. Without, experience without it. the pressure of trying to create a deficit. I like that. Like, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what mm. I was saying is that it's a perfect month for you to practice not labeling food because the foods that you once labeled as bad, as fattening, as whatever is going to be the food that you will be most present with this month. And so you need to be you need to sit with it. You need to sit with the pie. It's right in front of you. It's there. You're smelling it. How are you going to talk about it? Like what kind of language do you have when you're in the same room as pie, as gravy? And I think that it's like, because most of the time you might be able to uh, ignore having pie in your home or ignore having those fatty foods in your home. And now you're in the same room as them. Oh, uh, uh, like what's going to happen? How do you dun, dun, dun. Like <laughs> um, And so perfect opportunity to stop labeling food. And just look at that pie and say, hello, pie. I know that you are calorie dense because you have lots of butter. You have lots of sugar. Like that's let's, let's not label pie as bad. Let's and it's also highly palatable. Right. Pie has that like, um, sweet, but there's like the salt butter pastry, and like the, the crust mixed with the like smooth inner. Yeah. The crust is almost like savory. You know what I mean? If you didn't have it, that's why it's so. So is it delicious? You're going to have to repeat that leash. You were frozen and, and you were like kind of gone for a second. Oh. So you said the last thing that we heard from you is the pie. The inside is the, the crust and it's like almost savory. And then I want to know more about this pie that you're talking about. <laughs> 
I mean, that's basically it. But I'm basically explaining to them why it's so highly palatable. Yes. Yeah. No, I agree. To, 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 yeah. So. Sorry. I, I, I don't know why, but you're, I mean, everything's green on my end, but you're like really going in and out. I don't know what's happening on your end, but like things are like, I mean, we're going to figure it out. All is good. I don't know why. It's the, it's the wind. It's the, it's the, the little amount of snow coming out. We won't be able to do uh, podcasts on snowstorms. Okay. You guys. So, um, okay. Pie and gravy. <laughs> Why do we need to stop labeling, like basically the, 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 the quality or the skill to no longer label was like made for this time of year. Like when you think about it, if you would really believe into no longer labeling, no longer saying like, or no, also no longer labeling what a weight loss journey looks like, or when it's time, like labeling your month, labeling, like just labels in general, labeling your weekends. Like we said, last meeting, last uh, podcast, Labels in general, if you just like take those out, you're going to be able to attack December in a very different, with a different, a very different lens. Like, oh, there is no bad food. I am not anxious. I'm not feeling worried. I think that that for me, if our message, like the most important piece for me of this message that we can get across to you guys isn't about helping you to not gain weight. I want to help you to not have anxiety around food. Yes, that, say it louder for the people in the back. Like that is when I feel like I've made a difference. When people can stop having anxiety and worry and concern about food. When when food stops taking up so much noise and space in your brain, that's when we're getting somewhere. Yeah. So when you understand that there's nothing bad about pie that is just calorie dense, that you're not going to gain weight because of pie, then you start to look at pie different. <laughs> yes. And I think that that's not valued enough out there. You guys, I think that people are like, Bello, no, if I don't tell myself that I can't have pie, I'll eat all the pie. How about you practice that and see if you're actually going to eat all the pie when you actually understand how a body gains weight. Like, it's almost like you saying, if I didn't know the price of things, I would just buy everything. No, I think you would also think about like, what do I actually need? Do I actually need this? Do I actually need 17 of these shirts? Who cares if the price is $1 per shirt and you have $17, do you want 17 of them? Like is the question that you should be asking yourself. And I think that we're not having the proper reflections before we consume food. We're just thinking about like, is it fattening? Is it going to mean me, me? Like it's that language. Like, do I actually want this? Am I actually hungry? Do I... I, and like, oh, not only do we want you guys to have the conversation around food of just like, okay, it is what it is. Like it's, it's, it's calorie dense, whatever. I'd love for you guys to say, is this worth it to me? Mm. Because sometimes we start to consume food. That's not even like really worth it to us. Like, do you even allow yourself space to have that conversation about food and food? We're not saying just bad food. So it's very interesting because people are like, you only ask yourself if it's worth it to you, if it's if you've labeled that food as bad, do you ask yourself that for vegetables? The vegetables at the buffet that Alicia said during our meeting. That was so funny. Um, you go to a buffet and there is nacho, uh, not nachos, what, the navo? What's navo in anglais? Um, it's a orange and it's a vegetable and you mush it. It kind of looks like squash. <sighs> no, it's not. It's gonna... You sure? Oh, no, that's, that's going to bother Where, me. Do you have it on, during the holidays? Yes. It's very much like part of like Christmas tradition, the navo squash. Squash? Let me let me make sure here. I feel like squash is that what what do you eat with that you make spaghetti out of it? Um sp spaghetti squash, but there's like seven different varieties of squash there, okay. little buddy. Squash Christmas squash. Yeah, there's like acorn squash, there's spaghetti squash, there's like so many different kinds of squash. But that's a great example because squash. Squash? What am I saying? I don't know. Um, there's so much. That's such a great example because often it's mushed. What is it mushed with? Mm, butter, salt. So you're like, like I'm going to take this on my plate because like, I feel like I should, uh, but I don't really like it. Because you labeled it as good. Because you labeled it as good. So the damage of food labeling, labeling is good and bad is damaging to your choices, your all of those things. And to your deficit, honestly. Like, I just feel like you should never consume something just because it's labeled good in your brain. 
Like, you know what I mean? And sometimes we've labeled things as good. Let's go through the list of things we've labeled as good that are really calorie dense. Smoothies, quesadillas. I love how you put quesadillas in that category. I feel like I people would... think it's because it's like so um, thin. They're like, I'll be thin if I eat quesadillas. I swear to God. Uh, wrap, <laughs> salads, um, a smoothie bowl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like all those things like avocado toast. Like it's just like fancy <laughs> words that you're like labeled good in your brain that are actually very calorie dense and you don't and even I like them. Yeah. And a lot of those things are very nutrient dense. Remember, that's not what we're saying right now. We're just talking about labeling food as good and just kind of ignoring the whole like nutrients. You know, yeah, like nutrients and like weight loss are two different conversations. They certainly overlap. Um, but uh, it's just as important that you don't blindly look at super nutrient dense food as I'm going to eat as much of this as I want because it's good. Yeah. And that and, and thinking that those foods will help you be, you know, in a calorie deficit, not necessarily you guys. I mean, the only foods that are going to like help you be in a calorie deficit is because they're going to help you stay full. And yes. my, 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 my. that's you know what I mean? But there's no magic in those foods. No. And there's nothing bad about the gravy and the pie either. Ever. Okay. So I think that was like our message today was really about the food labeling. I think that like that's the biggest piece. And also realizing that the power that that has over you, especially during the holidays. And I want you guys to listen to yourselves talk about the food and say, okay, are you going in saying I can only eat a sliver? Like that is giving you uh, labeling food as bad and limiting, restricting how much you can have is giving you the scarcity mindset. And with the scarcity mindset is your thought that this is the only time that this is going away and then you way overeat it uh, on top of the, the thought that it's bad. So that's the guilt and shame. So all of those things all together are what's making you way overeat that food item. Yeah. So you know what I mean? So make sure that you are, listen to yourself, think, what are you telling yourself about the desserts? What are you telling yourself? And is that serving you? How's that going for you? Yeah. So someone was asking, like, do you have more videos on scarce, you know, scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset and where to start? And I'm like, at the end of the day, it's always about creating current awareness with your current thoughts. You might have abundance mindset about different things and scarcity mindset about like different things. Like everyone's scarcity mindset is not the same as like the next one. And you could have an abundance mindset about something in life that like someone else is more like has a scarcity mindset on it. So you need to like I think, I actually think that it's not this like general thing. I think there's certain aspects or certain foods that you have more of a scarcity mindset on. And often those are like your favorite ones. Absolutely. Because those are the ones in the past when you went on a diet, you cut out. Yeah. And you're still like recovering from that. Yeah. Um, so it's like sometimes it's fast food, sometimes it's chocolate, wine, like all the thing chips. Sometimes it's the things that you've told yourself are bad that you've tried to cut out in the past and you have created a scarcity mindset around those foods. We always like to like compare to our healthy or our neighbor who's never struggled with um, their their weight before. They have abundance mindset around these foods. Ever see them go to the chip and dip table at the party and they have a couple and then they walk away? Do you know Why? Because they have an abundance mindset. Because they know the next party they go to, they can eat as much dip as they want. Right. You think you want to be able to eat all the dip, but you don't. You want the permission to eat as much as you want. We are giving you that permission. Give yeah. yourself that permission. Yeah. And I think that once you give yourself that permission, you'll see yourself acting differently. And also your focus becomes different because imagine the difference between someone that arrives at a party and their language is like, okay, no, no you know, just like two bites of the dip, step away from the table and all of that like noise versus someone that's like, okay, be who you want to be today. And the person you want to be is like talking to your friends, having dip, having whatever, and you'll see yourself actually performing better. And also it's not about like the performance all the time. It's also like how you like don't feel deprived and like how you show up. It's very different. You'll see yourself showing up more as who you want to be. Yeah, I did see that question come through and someone said, okay, I see that you have an abundance mindset. How do you get there? You know, there's no straight path and everyone is different, but you need to start telling yourself that you can eat as much of whatever that you're trying yeah. to cut out. Um, 
that food is not bad. And then you need to start practicing that. So that's showing up at the party without a rule on how much dip you can eat, but just remind yourself that you want to show up as who you want to be. And then taking time to reflect later. Yes, I was going to say, so after the party, you guys, if you're like, well, that didn't work. I ate all of the dip, okay? Don't be upset. It's not the fact that you told yourself you could have whatever as to why you had whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's not because you gave yourself permission to have whatever that you overate. Maybe that's you showing up as who you want to be and then that upsets you. You're like, ah, that's not who I want it to be. I wanted to give myself permission to have all the dip, but I wanted to be the person that has a reasonable amount and I didn't end up being that person. So next time, ne- I've learned next time I'll do something like I'll repeat or I'll step away or whatever. I almost think that overeating, I don't want to say overeating because what is that really, but overindulging, going past a point of hunger, taking more energy than you actually need it, with a certain item is actually part of the way to to create like it's, it's almost a part of the journey like you almost like need that experience and then you go okay how did I feel physically I felt like shit how did I feel mentally I was I was annoyed with myself I regretted it I didn't quite show up as who I wanted to be that's progress yes then then like you said you go to the next party okay this is me I abundance mindset I can eat as much as I want how did I feel last time yeah how can I tweak that and just keep showing up, you guys. And guys, like, it, this is a relationship with yourself. And realize that, like, when you're creating a relationship with, like, another person or, like, with others, you win some and you lose some. And there are times where you don't show up in your friendships or as a mom as you, like, really wanted to. You lose your patience, you whatever. But what do you do? Next time, I'll be better. Right? Next time, you're not like, quit. I'm not no longer a mom. Does anyone oh want this kid? You know what I mean? You're like, oh, shoot. Like, that's not who I wanted to be. I had, I had given myself permission to be myself, but I think I lost my patient way too quickly. And I, you can either go apologize to your child. You can apologize to yourself if you're like, you know what? Like, that's not who you want it to be. Next time, no, let's work together and being better at this. You know, that's it. No. And just you wake up the next morning, you go back to work and you get dressed and uh, just life continues though. But it's, it's like our health is like one of those things or in our, in our progress that we on, differently that we, 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 we give up on ourselves. Like we, you know, at, we give up. We're just it's like, ah, oh, that's no other human involved, Alicia. I know you're so right. You're so right. Cause you, it's, it's just easy. us giving up on us. It's easier to give up on yourself than it is to give up on your child, your relationship, your job, all those you're things. not disappointing anyone else. And oh. it's, just, it's that accountability piece that. You have to be your biggest, like you have to be your biggest uh, fan, your hype girl, your, like you have your own back. Like it's when you are feeling disappointed about your journey, you have to have a conversation with yourself that's positive and like, let's keep going. Not the conversation that's like, you suck, uh, quit. You know what I mean? Like it's very, that's just the difference. I think that people think that people that lose weight and keep it off have this magical either meal plan or way, or it's not, it wasn't as bad as me. They're not as addicted to foods as I was. Like, it's all that, like why, why it's them and not me. But the thing is all we have differently is how we speak to ourselves. When the last time you quit, you were the one that convinced yourself to quit. Like that's what happened. That's what happened many times over and over. It's just you and a conversation with you telling you, meh, it's not the right time. I'll wait till January. And I told myself a different story that one time, you know? So it's just that. It's just telling yourself a different story. And it's so, it's encore, c'est toi avec toi. And often we like wait for an adult to come save us. And we keep saying that no one's coming. No. They're not. No one's coming to tell you you can do this. No one's coming. And and you know what? Even if people like, imagine like how often we show up leash and we're like, you can't stop in January and December law. Like you don't want to arrive in January. Like you have to coexist. You're going to figure this out. We're here for you. You don't have to lose weight in December. Like we're really trying hard to, to give them a different message. And we still for sure have members that convince themselves to, to stop and come back. 100%. So see, like I, I'm that adult telling you and, and like, not even that, like you're an adult that I'm an adult that you're paying to tell you, you got this. We're giving you all the tools and you can still convince yourself out of it. So that's just to prove to you how you're, how powerful your own brain is, you guys, and how you can convince yourself to do things. Even when all the signs are pointing you to do something else, you can convince yourself. 
Oh, this is good. This is so good. So guys, a- yeah, go, you know, go into your holiday meals with not demonizing any specific food item that happens to be on the table at that point. Like it's just gravy. It's just pie. It might be calorie dense, might be delicious. What do you want? How much you want? Look at it from the lens of, okay, this is me. I'm going to practice abundance mindset right now. I'm going to yep. see how it goes. I'm going to reflect on that. And then I'm going to repeat and try to keep showing up as the person I want to be every single day. And that like, that's legit our lives. Yes. So most people want to know like how we do it. And I'm like, we're telling you, we're like so transparent. We're not yeah. hiding any skills Zero in our things. pockets. Legit. We show up as who we want to be, but like I should have my paper that I used at the live I- time, time. We time- did not quit every December. We did okay. not time and that commitment to not quit. And, and I, I recognize that in myself, like what I had, you know, my stories that I tried to lose weight a hundred thousand times before. And I had, I had lost and gained 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, legit 10 years for 10 years on and off. And this time I said, okay, you're not going to quit. Like that was legit it. Like I was like, you're not going to quit this time. And that's language. See, it wasn't like, okay, look, you're not going to eat carbs this time. Like, yeah, it's legit just language. You're not going to quit. You're going to always have your back. And there was one other commitment. I committed to being happy along the way. Right. I love that. Of course. So, and, and this is a nice reminder as we get closer and closer to January for you guys, I committed to not doing shitty things I'd done before to lose weight. And you all know what I mean when I say shitty things. Yeah. Crappy things. You committed to not putting yourself on a diet. I committed to not, that's really good. I committed to not putting myself on a diet. I committed to not suffering um, and just embracing the suck in order to lose weight. I was like, I am going to figure out how uh, my happiness, my life can coexist with weight loss. What a great way to, um, I think those are great words to um, get people excited about the new year's. Like, let's oh, not put I'm excited. on diets. Let's not put our, like, let's, let, let's make 2022 the diet free year. Like, let's not start a diet. Let's not start a diet this January. We double dog dare you. We're (laughs) going to, we're going to that. Please tell me this. What's this metaphor? What's this analogy? What is this, these, this way of saying things? I feel like it's something we used to say like legit when we were teenagers. Oh my God. Please tell me I'm not the only one that had knows what I mean when I say double dog dare listeners, please, please tell me I'm not alone. (laughs) <laughs> okay, you guys. So hopefully this conversation uh, is making you feel less an- like less anxiety around pie and gravy. That and if you're a member, please, if you're like, I like I, I need to know understand why I can't be afraid of pie and gravy, then you need to relook into the calorie deficit knowledge. Like I understand how a body loses weight and gains weight. So because I understand it and believe it and trust it and have experienced it, I'm not afraid of pie and gravy. I'm not afraid of any food because I understand how a body loses weight. And I understand that I have control as well. So if you're a member, go to the calorie de- your calorie deficit. It's a section in the Be Your Best program. I think that's a great section for you. And I think the your confidence as well. Like yes. showing up con- like with like I got this, like the, I am in control of what's getting into my mouth. Not my, my brain is of course, but you're in control of your brain. Like know that you guys. Okay. Sable, have a great week. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Follow us. Tell us that you love us. Um, what leave else? Reviews, leave reviews, leave us review. stars. I can only assume that we're like top whatever by now on the podcast. Three, top three. I'm going to keep up to, actually, usually they send us an email on a Monday. Oh, Stay that's tuned, exciting. Guys. Okay, 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 okay. All okay. right, everyone. We love you. We appreciate you. You got this. Bye. Bye, guys.